this here at North Park Worship Center. For those who are in-house, I'm going to ask you to stand. If you're online as well, please join us as we get ready to enter into a time of worship, a time of celebration, a time of thanksgiving, a time of acknowledging our God for who He is. So take your Bibles, please, and turn with me as we read Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and a verse 5. Reading from the ESV version. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the God that we worship. This is the God that we come to celebrate this morning. He said he is, he is God. He is God of gods, he is lords of lords, and he's worthy to be worshipped. So I pray today that as we, you join us in our worship experience, you will connect with this God in a way that you have never really connected before. The writer says we enter into his presence with thanksgiving his courts with praise. And so join us this morning as we enter his presence with praise and thanksgiving unto his holy name. Father, we thank you for this privilege. We thank you for the fact that we can draw close to you this morning. The writer says, what a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne, to be called into your presence as your own. And so we come this morning and we present ourselves before you to acknowledge you, to see you, to glorify you, to lift you up for who you are as the King of Kings and as the Lord of Lords. And so, Lord, I pray that as we enter into this time, I pray that our hearts and our minds and our whole being will be engaged in this time of worship. Oh, God, let it be something that is that flows from the depths of our being. Let it not just be something that is superficial, but may we truly connect with you on a level that will allow us, so oh God, to give to you our all, give to you our best, for you are the God who is deserving. We honor you this morning, in Jesus' name. Good morning. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son. What a great gift we have been given. What a privilege it is that we can come into his house this morning and worship God, worship the Lord, worship our Savior, worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Never 
and lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting here with open arms. Hallelujah. He's waiting here. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven. Is great, your love was greater. What can separate us now? What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful. Name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name, huh? Let's do that first verse again. You were the word at the beginning.
chapter 1st John chapter 2 and I'll be reading from the ESV version my little children I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin but if anyone does sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whosoever say, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know, by this we know how we know that we are in him. Whosoever say he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Beloved, verse 12, verse 
Beloved, I am writing, I am writing you no new, com- no new commandment, but an old commandment that you may that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the time, at the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whosoever say he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whosoever loves his brother abides in the light and in him. There is no cause for stumbling, but whosoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for your names, for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I am writing to you, children, because you know the Father. I, I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whosoever does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that that it might be plain that they were not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you have the knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, But because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? That is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whosoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just as he has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, so that whenever he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. Amen. At this time, the altar is open. If you have a need this morning, the God that is presented in the scripture is a God that is available to you to meet you at your point of need. 
whatever you're going through, whatever your circumstance this morning, he's able to minister to you right where you are. If you're joining us online this morning and you have a need right where you are, as you reach out to God, he is there promised to minister to you. And so you may say this morning, I'm not in the church service, I'm not in, I'm not in the church building, so I'm not sure that God will hear me right where you are. He's very present. He sees you, he knows you, he understands exactly what you're going through. And so this morning, join us as we go before him in our time of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for who you are. We thank you for the hope that we have that we can come boldly before your presence. You are the great and awesome God, perfect in love, perfect in all that you do. And we thank you this morning that we can draw near to your throne. We thank you this morning that access is granted through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we can come boldly before you, casting all our cares upon you, knowing that you care about us. And so it is with this assurance that your people this morning, wherever they may be, can come boldly before you, can cry out to you with the assurance that God hears and answers prayer. Father, this morning I lift up every need. You know every situation, every heart that is lifted up, every voice that is lifted up, everyone that is standing, oh God, in a need of prayer this morning. Wherever they may be, there are some in the hospital this morning that are, that are desperately in need of your divine touch. But I thank you that you're the God that can meet them at their very place, right where they are. I pray this morning, O oh God, for your divine intervention in our situations. It is more than we can handle. But we thank you, O oh God, that we do not have to try to fix it. We don't have to try to go it alone. But we have a God that gives us the confidence and the assurance that says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. And so this morning, O oh God, as we come, touch every heart, touch every life. Lord, there are those uh, who, are, who are desperate, not knowing what tomorrow brings, not knowing, oh God, how they're going to face the next moment. There are some, oh God, this morning that are so burdened, God, so heavy with the pressures of life. But I thank you this morning that you are their burden bearer. You are the lifter of our heads, oh God. Whatever we are going through, Lord, we can, we can bring it before you with the confidence of knowing that you will intervene. You are the way maker. You are the God who comes alongside us. You are the God who comforts us. You are the God who delivers us, oh God, from our deepest, darkest pit. And so whatever we are dealing with this morning, it is with this confidence that we come before you. Touch your people. May lift them, O oh God, O oh God, out of their, their darkest moment. Help them to know that you're near. Help them to experience your divine presence in a way, O oh God, that they have never experienced before. May they know, O oh God, that you're not alone. There are times when they may feel as if you have abandoned them. There are times when they may feel as if you do not hear their cry. There are times, oh God, when they feel as if uh, you have turned your back on them. But reassure them this morning that you're there. That you see. That you hear. That you understand what you're going through. And that you're here to deliver. I pray, oh God, especially, oh God, for Winsome this morning who is in the hospital. I thank you, oh God, for what you have done in her life. I thank you, God, for your divine intervention, O oh God, even to this point. And I pray, Lord, for the continuous, he, continual healing of her body. O oh God, that you will restore her health, restore her, God, and help her to, to recognize that it is the mighty hand of God. Let all praise and all glory, O oh God, be lifted up to you. 
as we see you displaying your power and your glory. And for every other church member, they may not be at the hospital, but Lord God, there are some that are sick at home. I pray, God, that you will minister. Touch every heart. Touch every life. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. We give you honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to be having the welcome and the announcements. But I just want to take a moment just to acknowledge a special person who joined us this morning, Sister Gurley. Where is Sister Gurley? Okay. Sister Gurley Sharp is with us. Awesome, awesome. It's great to see um, our seniors um, taking the time to join us. I know it was really hard with, with the COVID um, uh, epidemic and all the lockdown and the restrictions, but it's good to see our members who are able to join us again. Welcome. Sisters. Good morning, everyone. It is good to be with you all, and I had it on my list to say welcome to Sister Gurley. We're so happy to have you here. It's really nice post-COVID to think of the fact that there are faces that I've seen more than 30 years still here and still making it out. Just a reminder to all of us that it's good for us to gather in person. If our seniors are making the effort, so can we all to come back and fellowship together. So it's good to see you, Sister Gurley. Nobody's been eating since you left. We're all hungry. <laughs> Just so that you know, all right? But of course, it's good to see everyone that's here with us this morning. My name is Sister Sandy, and I'm going to be delivering your announcements. And of course, we want to say hi to those of us that are joining us virtually. If you are joining us virtually, and it's your first time with us online at North Park Worship Center, we want to say welcome. And of course, we'd love for you to complete the uh, description box. There's a connection card there that you can find to leave us with your contact details. And of course, for anyone that's here in person, is there anyone that's visiting with us for the first time? If we could ask you to stand, just so that we could give you your brief acknowledgement. We have a first time visitor, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for standing. And we have more. Keep standing, keep standing. We like to admire our, our visitors here. So on behalf of our senior pastor, associate pastors, ministers, members, and visitors, we would like to say welcome. If you don't have a regular place of worship, we'd love to have you back here at 395 North Park Drive. God bless you, and I pray that you are blessed worshiping with us today, and of course, we want to see you again. Thank you, and North Park, please make them welcome. And of course, to anyone that's here with us, it may not be your first time, perhaps your second or your third. It's not remiss on us, so we just want to say welcome to you as well. And at this time, I will be going through a few of our announcements. Firstly, we would like to announce and advise that this evening at 6.30 p.m., we have our National Solemn Prayer Assembly, and that's going to be taking place at West End Worship Center. So if you're able to attend, please join us. And we'd also like to advise that our seniors' midday moments will be resuming Monday, September 26th at 12 noon, and every Monday again thereafter. For additional information, you can call or email um, Sister Debbie Simmons-Charles or Sister Jackie Dixon. And a reminder as well that our discipleship process classes continue to run virtually on Mondays at 7 p.m. If you are interested in water baptism or being a member here at North Park Worship Center, we'd ask you to please contact our church office or complete our sign-up sheet, which is available in the foyer. And of course, you're always welcome to ask our pastors or ministers for more details. And our family ministry virtual reading program that's gonna resume on October 1st at 4 to 5 p.m. And this will be taking place every Saturday and continuing from there on. For more information, you can contact a member of Family Ministries. 
And of course, we all know that we've had some transition in Eastern Canada. Uh, Bishop Woodrow Thompson and First Lady Pauline Thompson, who served here at this local church for over 18 years and are now serving in the Mid-Atlantic region in the United States, um, they will be visiting with us on Sunday, October 9th, and we're asking you to please come out and show your appreciation for all the work that they've done here at North Park and, of course, in Eastern Canada. And we'd like to make an announcement that North Park Worship Center will be having their fall We Start Leadership Breakfast. This meeting will take place on October 15th between 9 and 12 noon. All team leaders and team um, members are also required to be in attendance. And if you haven't registered, we're going to ask you to please do so by contacting the church office or by emailing um, our um, executive administrator, Sister Stephanie Davis. And uh, Concrete Rose Ministry is having a Build a Library Book Drive initiative. And we're asking you, of course, to please reach out if you have any books that are sitting on the shelf, collecting desks that you haven't read. Uh, and of course, this it does not apply to only children's books. If you have adult reading books as well, we're asking you to please contact Sister Suzanne Eubanks um, for more information on how you can give. And finally, we have a video announcement for an upcoming event in relation to our very own Sister Dion Dennis, so we ask you to direct your attention to the screen. Cover. No one could tell unless you heard my story. A walk through adversity by faith, and now it is time to celebrate victory. On October 2nd at 6 p.m., come for an evening of celebration signing of Faith vs. Faith by Dion Dennis at North Park Worship Center. You don't want to miss out. And a small little plug for our event that's happening on the 2nd with our very own sister, Dion Dennis. It promises to be a night of worship. She is giving thanks for what God has brought her through. And whether you are a friend, close, or an acquaintance, please join us as we celebrate with her in her journey. And that concludes all of our announcements, North Park. Please enjoy the rest of your week. I know there's no more sunshine outside, but God is still smiling on us. And please be blessed for the rest of the service. It's offering time. Amen, amen. And as always, we do give thanks for the committed service of our, of our members. Uh, we're, we're having our community outreach service today. And again, this is why we give. Or one of the reasons why we give it is to minister to our communities. God has been faithful. God has blessed us abundantly. And you have been faithful. And so as always, you can see on the screen the different ways of giving. I'm just going to ask that you stand as we just give to God thanks for the faithfulness of his people. As he continues to um, shower us with his blessing so that we can be a blessing to others. Father, we thank you this morning for what you continue to do in our lives. Thank you that in the midst of such difficult economic times your people have remained faithful trusting in you as the God who is their source the God who continues to supply all their needs that they can they can in turn be a continuous blessing to our communities reaching out to those who are in need and so I pray, God, that you will bless the offering, but I pray that you will continue to bless your people, that they will continue to give, recognizing, oh God, that everything that they do, they do it unto your glory. And so it may seem simple. Sometimes they may think that the little that they have can't do much, but when they give it faithfully, God, you're able to use it in a mighty way. Sometimes we may not even understand, but God, you're able to impact lives in an in a, in, in a amazing way by the faithfulness of your people. And so we thank you this morning for your gift. We thank you this morning for the givers. And we thank you this morning that you are our faithful God. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me see this.
At this time, we're going to be receiving the word, uh, and we have a special guest speaker with us this morning. I'm going to invite our senior pastor, Pastor Mark Lawrence, to um, just do an introduction of our speaker. Good morning, church. Good morning. As you know, we're in our community outreach uh, Sunday. Today is our community outreach Sunday, and uh, we have a special two special guests uh, with us uh, today, and um, I'm really excited that they are with us, that they're able to join us uh, today. Um, Pastor Vivian and his wife, uh, Michelle, uh, let me say that um, I've known him for a very short time, uh, maybe around, for the, I believe it's about four years be three or four years that I was introduced uh, to him. And, um, you know, I'm realizing that as you get older, that um, you don't need a lot of friends, but you just need some good people around you. And so it is a privilege to, that I had the opportunity to, to meet with him. When I go to his place of business, I won't say what it is, um, <laughs> but uh, I, there's so much respect from his clients and his customers. Everyone who walks through the doors calls him pastor. Pastor. And so to me, when I hear that, that is so much respect. And they know who he is and what he's about. And so, again, we're happy that he's with us. Vivian, Pastor Vivian is a graduate of the West Indies School of Theology. Ministry commenced in 1986 at Jesus Life Center in Trinidad, where he served for 10 years. 1996, together with his wife, Michelle, they transitioned to pastor the Calvary Pentecostal Church in Trinidad, where they served for 10 years. Pastor Yearwood and his family migrated to Canada in 2005 where he served as an associate pastor of Agape Ministries Toronto for over five years. 2011, Pastor Yearwood, together with his wife of over 33 years, founded the Truth Center, where he presently served as pastor. He was associated with the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies for over 25 years, where he held various leadership positions and served as part-time lecturer at his alma mater, um, Reverend Vivian, is an ordained minister with the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada and has been an, an itinerant speaker throughout Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean, and North America for over 30 years. North Park, join me in welcoming Pastor Vivian Yearwood. Good morning, all. And let me see the smiles. Even behind the mask. Praise God. It's our privilege to be here to give praise and honor to our God. First and foremost, honor to the pastor and his dear wife of the house, all ministers, leaders, members, and visitors, if you happen to be visiting like us this morning. Uh, I don't have much time and I want to get to this, but this dear lady with me is not just a beautiful woman, but a fellow minister, also a graduate of the West Indies School of Theology, and I've been singing <laughs> since she was teenage. And she sang on our wedding day, walking up the aisle to me, 33 years, two months and 10 days ago today. So she's going to come and bless your hearts and song. Come, sweetie. <laughs> Good morning, North Park. <laughs> it's a privilege for us to be here today. Uh, to the song people, don't turn my mic up 
too much because I have a big voice. <laughs> and <coughs> I just want to bless your hearts with this song this morning. Uh, you guys may be familiar with it, you know, but every day that I wake up, I say, God, you're really good. You know, to have me standing here, God is really good. You know, I'm uh, six years, six, yeah, six years uh, cancer survivor. And I give God praise, amen. <laughs> He's good. He's good. He's good. Ladies, I'm going to tell you, don't just sit there. If you feel something funny on your body, go check it out. Go check it out. Don't sit and be just, ah, it's nothing. But check it out. But God is good. And every day we should sing of his goodness. Amen? Ah. For your mercy never fails me I love you Lord For your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. For all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so so God, with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. <laughs> I love your voice. <laughs> you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I will live in the goodness of God hey, For all my life you have been faithful Oh yes you have all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Hey, all my life you have been faithful Oh, yes, you have Life laid 
God, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, it's running after. Yes, your goodness is running after. Oh God, when my life lay down, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh God, your goodness is running after. When my life lay down, I surrender. Oh, your goodness is running up. It's running after me. Because all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. You brought me to the fire, God. All my life, you've been so, so good, yes, with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of my God, yes, I will. Sing of the goodness of God. Your good God. Your good God. Praise His name. Praise His name. Has God been good to you? Come on. Has God been good to you? Bless His name. Praise God, praise God. Uh, is it possible to put the PowerPoint up? Just let me know. If, if you're having struggles with it, it's good. Would I see it on that screen? Nice. And put it so that those that are sitting can see. Okay, so we're going to look at Luke chapter 8. No, no, that's not where we're looking. That's not what we're looking at. Praise God. Luke 9, that's what we're looking at. Right. From verses 12 to 17. Okay. Uh, let me take the privilege of reading for you. I'm going to go from 12 to 17. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here. Next. He replied, Jesus, that is, you give them something to eat. They answered, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Unless we go and buy food for all this crowd. About 5,000 men were there. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. The disciples did so. And everyone sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate 
and we are satisfied. See satisfied. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces that was left over. Father, take your word. It's, it's your word and Holy Spirit, I commit myself to you to use me as your voice to speak to the heart, to the spirit, to the soul of everyone under the sound of my voice. Meet them at the level of their understanding and bless them at their point of need today. May this word find fertile soil in every soul that hears it. Germinate unto a tree of life producing fruit that would remain. And to this end we give you praise, honor, and glory. In no other name but the name Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Give me a, a need to get an idea of 20, 25 minutes, hopefully, get through and share with you the things that the Spirit of the Lord has placed in my heart to share with all of you today. The text is not a strange text to anyone here. Of all the miracles in Scripture, it is the only miracle recorded in all four Gospels. It's the only act that Jesus did that the four different authors of the Gospels recorded to get a full picture of what I will share with you the next little while. You actually need to pay attention to all four. I don't want to give you too much of a historical context because I am pressed for time, but each author had a crowd, an audience specific. Each author was representing a particular issue of the people that he wrote to, and therefore there are certain things that some would have said that others would not have said, but to get a chronological order, of what actually happened, you have to pay attention to all four. I will tell you where they are. You can go find them because I am not going to refer to them or put them up for the sake of time. It's found in Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34, and John chapter 6 from verses 5 to 13. The same scenario is recorded in all four places. It's interesting that this feeding of the 5,000 is so significant. And this being your day and team for today, church and community, I want to pull from the text things that are relevant putting unto us and to you as a community right where you are. The great multitude was following Jesus for several days. He was extremely tired, weary, and hungry. And he said to the disciples, let's find somewhere remote to relax and take a rest. And that is what they did. Uh, if it has video, I want to be disciplined and don't go too much. I like to walk. But if I'm staying here, we okay faster? Good. Uh, when they got to where was supposed to be a secluded place, word passed that Jesus was there and the crowds, the multitude came looking after out, looking out for him, sourcing him. The scripture says this interesting thing. Jesus looked at the multitude, was moved with compassion because he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. First thing I want you to understand, I want you to take a look at your community and evaluate what do you see. How do you see your community is very important as it relates to how you respond to your community. If you see your community through the eyes of the flesh, they may look okay. Some might lack certain things. And some might be in situations where obviously to you that they need help. And they are the one that you might want to single out and you might go to look to them. But if you see people through the eyes of Jesus, you will see people as lost sheep if they're not serving the God that you know to be God. Are you following me? When you see people lost, when you see people having need of a Savior, your interaction with them becomes different. 
Are you following me? So Jesus was concerned about these people so much that he gave up on the idea of rest and he started to teach them. The scripture says he went on and taught them all day long. Being tired and hungry, he forbore that to minister to them. Are you prepared to sacrifice to meet the needs of people? As a church community, I will sit here after and hear all that you have been doing, but I'm here for the few that might not be too interested yet. You see, and some of you that are even interested, I hope to encourage you that you'll be more invested because you'll understand that we deal with matters of eternity when we go to meet people and their needs. Now, we always have the folk who are concerned about what we could really do. So we have two major characters in the text that I want to highlight today. One by the name of Philip and the other by the name of Andrew. Philip probably had something to do with the financial aspect of things because when you read, and I, please, the, the text I give you, you could find reference and you could follow with me, but I, I'm going. Uh, Philip was concerned about the cost. Oh, it's about 5,000 men. If you understand the historical context, 5,000 men, let's say 2,500 has wives, the other 2,500 young men probably have sisters because to assume. He's looking at that and he immediately did a number and he said it's going to take us more than three months wages to feed these people. There's too much money. Should we really spend all this money on food? And for them all, we have it. We can't afford it. That was Philip's concern. But when you read all four, you'll also realize that the crowd frustrated the disciples, the closest men to Jesus so much, that they decided, you know what? The best way to deal with this problem is to get rid of it. Jesus sent them away. Send them away. Some of us see certain people in our community and you wish they pass on the other side of the road. You wish you really don't come into contact with them. Some of you probably live to some people and you wish they move. Because this neighbor of mine right now, oh my goodness, Father. And you're probably going into prayer and fasting and saying, Lord, Move them in the name of Jesus. And that is when we started speaking all kind of tongues. Rubber, slipper, Toyota, Ford, Mazda. And all sorts of things. Because we, we, we being religious and not really spiritual to see that the people that are provoking us are probably there because they have a need. They probably just lost sheep. They probably just empty and in need of help. So stop seeing the community as a problem. Because these men were walking with Jesus and they were seeing all that he was doing. But the crowd became a problem to them. A problem to them. So they say, send them, send them, send them away. Send them Jesus. Let them find some place somewhere, go and buy food. Jesus, being who he was, understood that that was really not a good idea. Because number one, it was late in the day. And they were in such a remote place that it would have been too far for them to get to any place where they could get food. And I don't know how much of the community you live in is open late at night. One of the things we missed when we came to Canada is the fact that in Trinidad, there are certain places that nobody sleeps. So we could always find something. We come here and realize these places are closing up early, 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 and all kind of thing. You can't, you can't go late because, you know, everybody closed. What, what, what is that? Imagine in those days, which... Which convenience store you think would have been open in a remote community to feed people who are hungry, tired and weary, and probably don't even have the resources? So those ideas of distancing yourself from the problem was not something that Jesus was concerned about. So he put them on the spot. And all four, uh, I think three out of the four mentions this. Jesus said to them, no, 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 you feed them. You feed them. But, but God, they're going to cost too much. And we don't have anything. That was Philip's response. 
But Andrew, Andrew is not mentioned much in New Testament. We don't know too much about Andrew as it relates to the disciples and his function. But Andrew seemed to be the guy who was the sociable guy who could just relate and communicate with people. And I have some of you right here like that. You might be known big in church for praying and singing and whatnot, but you have a sociable countenance and you, you just know how to get along with people. You are a valuable resource. Let me tell you something. Human skills are very rare in these days. We raise in a generation who only know how to function here. They come together to meet and they sit down in the same house, but everybody phone up. We all in the same room, but we texting. I'll tell you some years ago, I, we made a simple room in our house. My wife and I, because we have children, our children are 30 and 28 now. They are both married, living in their own homes. We are grandparents of one. My son is the one that was married in November. I have no grandchild from him yet. Give him a little three years. Let him, you know, work it out with the wife and then come with the child. My daughter waited three years. It's a nice time. But we made a simple rule in our house. Because I'm sitting upstairs in my bedroom and my child going to text me home. I pay in the bill. Eh? Everybody have phone because of, you can't text me in my own house. That, that is not right. And no wonder we have a generation now that cannot communicate and, and people emotionally disturbed and all of that. All of these things you need to consider when you're talking about community because you want to have things going on that people can come and actually socialize and, and talk to people. Learn to talk to people. Learn to watch people in the face and speak to them. Because somebody will send you some emoji that you don't like next thing you need a counselor. Somebody unfriend you on Facebook or, or somebody will like your picture on Instagram and you is a mess because you don't even know that Jesus already fearfully and wonderfully made you and you are perfect in his sight but no, you're what you'll be like somebody who put in a set of picture that the central cycle of all different kind of things to make it look so. When you see them in real, you're shocked. They pass through so much filters, you're wondering what is going on. The complexion, everything different. It's a crazy world that we have to minister to. So you have to be able to speak into the lives of people and let them see their value and their worth. And when they see that, nobody can mess them up because they like them. I tell people I love you because I'm wise. I don't have to know that you to love you. I am wise. If God in all his wisdom loves you as you are. Who am I? Who am I? And those of you who have problems with fashion and style and things, I tell people I don't dress to look good. I make clothes look good. This need me. If I don't have on this, it will look bad. If I take this off and put it down there, you will not see. But when it's on me, it looks good. I make clothes look good. I don't follow fashion. Fashion must follow me. If it cannot fit me right, that have a problem. I have none. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to understand these things if you're going to minister to community. Because you have to see them the way God sees them. And then you could minister to them at the need, at the point of need. Are you following me, church? So we have a group of people now who want to get the problem away. And Jesus said, no, you do it. And then they fall back to the position that a lot of us take. Can't afford it. Can't afford it. But it had a, a good mother who anticipated the situation and packed lunch for her son. Anticipating that he'd be out all day, uh, she packed lunch for her son. I know the boy was well raised because nowhere in the text it says how Andrew came into contact with the young man. That's not mentioned. But somewhere along the line, I would want to presume that the young man volunteered his lunch to Andrew. Why would I say that? Uh, followers of Christ in a desperate situation ain't going and looking for children to snatch their lunch. Everybody hungry. What will cause one man to go to a young boy and say, 
You need a two fish boy and your five loaves. We had 12,000 people to feed. You know, there are certain things you could just understand from natural common sense, which is the one thing ain't so common in the world these days is sense. It's somebody nonsense that people come up with. But this young man came to Andrew with his two fish and five loaves. And Andrew, based on historical experience of who Jesus has been with him, and some sort of childlike faith, that somehow or the other, <laughs> uh, we might be able to do something with this. He comes to Jesus and he says, we have a lad here. He got two fish, five loaves. You think you ain't have enough. You look at situations as broad as they are, as demanding as it might appear, and you think your little two fish and five loaves can't do anything. You know why you think like that? Because you still have it. The first way you deal with community issues because they are always bigger than us. It's always more than you could handle. It's to take the little that you have. Start with what you have. Oh, Father, help me. Start with what you have. Stop looking at what you don't have. The disciples looked at everything that they could not do, everything that they did not have, and they looked at the impossibility of the situation. When a kid said, I have this. If you start with what you have, it could do great things. And if everybody start with the little that they have, little becomes much. You know, we like to sing them kind of things in the we could sing certain things that we don't necessarily believe in. You know? We just sing in church. But here it is. Note that the miracle happened in the hand of Jesus, not the disciples. Stop thinking and believing that you are a miracle worker. Stop trying to perform miracles. And going on your own, trying to see what you could do. And what Hello? You ain't no miracle worker. You know what you are as a church? A distributor. You're a distributor of blessing. You're a distributor of miracles. Jesus took the bread and the loaves and he gave instructions to the church. He said, watch, put them out in groups of 50s. Try putting people in groups of 50s when you're dealing with 12,000 in the bush. They have grass around. Go sit. And you're doing that Without seeing anything to feed them. Oh, we talk, faith talk. We talk about believing. Oh, faith is to believe, to see. But some of us does only start believing when we see. We go and put nobody to sit down and we are nothing. Some of us are fearful to act because we are concerned about our inability to really produce. He said, put them out in groups of 50s and come back to me. And when they came back to him, he just lifted two fish, five loaves. He gave thanks to the father and he started breaking. I am from the island of Trinidad. We have one of the wonders of the world in Trinidad called the Pitch Lake. It's in Labre, Trinidad. We supply pitch run, what you're seeing on the road, to the world. The pitch lake is a phenomenon because before I was in liquid form, people had on uniform and was digging pitch from that lake. And every day they moved tons and tons of pitch. And by the next week, all the pitch that they move is right there. That has been going on from the beginning of time. And the more they take the pitch out, is the more the pitch keeps coming. It's a travesty that Trinidad is financially unstable. It's crazy. But here it is. 
God has the ability to give you what I would call a pitch leak anointing. Where the little that you have and you break it, you still always have some more to break. Somehow God has this ability that you, you, he, give, he start breaking and he's giving to 12 men to feed 12,000. And the more he break, they're coming back because you're making trips, right? And he's still breaking. Try breaking two fish. Five loaves. They make trip, they come back, you're still breaking two fish. And five loaves. Come, church, I wonder if you understand what I'm saying. You, you, you talk about Jesus, but do you understand in your mind that God could cause things in your fridge? You didn't go to the grocery because you didn't have no money last week. But somehow when you go back to the fridge, it still have milk. It still have rice. It still have flour in the house. You, you can't understand why things seem to last a little longer because God knows this. Oh, Father, help me. Let me, let me tell you something. You, you, you ever drive your car and you're watching the E and, 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 and all you're talking about empty? No, in my car, E is for enough. E is not for empty. E has the ability to take you from one point to the next by faith. And I'm not foolish because I've been driving since I'm 17. I never shut down for gas yet because God is faithful. My wife could share testimony. I used to pass out in the country and I go to big shot church to preach. Young couple, we start off and, and we're doing well and, and big shot church, big money. Invite me to preach and I leave with just enough gas to reach by faith. Because it's Sunday. The pastor pick it up offering. Young man going to get blessed and going to get gas and I'll come back home. There's an international church I go into, the preacher on TV, all kind of thing. I say, yeah, man, blessing sure. So I go on by faith. We ain't got no money. Because the church we started pastoring when we started off, we ain't have no money. Vacant for four years. God is speaking to nobody to pastor the church. Because they couldn't pay. I'm a graduate of the school. Before I graduated, we started pastoring because we went there to visit. The people begged us to stay. And we stayed. I pastored against the Pawi constitution for a year and a half while still in school. Because nobody got it talking to. To go to go in the bush. Ten years after I left, church have property, church have people, church have everything. Fourteen people here from God. The day they hear I was leaving. How come? By the time we left, twenty something people apply. How come did God talking now? When the church had nothing, God wasn't talking. But when church had money, every man of God here from God. God sending me here and God sending me there. Be careful because you have to understand that your resources and your ability is not up to you. It is who holds it in his hand. If you give things to God, God does do some tremendous things with it. Are you following me? So the church budget, Mr. Treasurer, Mrs. Treasurer, whoever you are, the pastor didn't tell me nothing. I'm just telling you, don't start shooting things down because we can't afford it. Trust God when you can't trace him and see what he could do. Are you following me? But let me wrap this up. We talk about sowing and reaping and we talk about giving and, and stuff. I, I, I don't give to get. I don't preach give to get. I don't. That's, that's not the theology of the scripture that I expound. I, I give because God is good. Free will. You see, you, you ain't giving to God to play lotto. You following me? Stop, stop giving a hundred and saying, go and I claim a hundred fold, so I want a thousand. This ain't, this ain't lottery. But when you give to God because you understand that God is good and God promised that if you seek his kingdom first and its righteousness, hello, hello, you see that part we just miss sometimes. It's righteousness. Righteousness starts here. Right thinking. 
Righteousness gravitates to hear, right feeling. Gravitate go righteousness governs how you speak, right speaking. And if you think right with your heart right and you speak right, you will have what you say, right living. Righteousness is right thinking, right speaking, right feeling, and right behavior. But you could change the order up a bit with thinking, feeling, speaking, and behavior. Your behavior is supposed to be the fruit of a mind that has been renewed. A right thinking mind. Are you following me? But look at the phenomenal scenario in the text. We didn't have enough when we started. The people are too far. Too much. The food isn't available. All we have is two fish and five loaves. But I made you repeat a word. You remember the word? 12,008. 12,013. 12 disciples and Jesus. Eight. And were what? And they were what? Satisfied. But what happened after? How many disciples? How many baskets? Oh, Father, help me. How many disciples? How many baskets? Twelve baskets. How? Quarter? Wait, wait. From two fish. And five loaves. These ministers of God were used, sent an assignment. To minister to the needs. Of all these people. Followed as instructed. And sat them in groups of 50. Always go as instructed. Follow scripture. Follow God. Follow what he says. He is breaking the bread. And the two fish. And they are working with it. They are working with it. And the community is fed. The community is fed physical food. But note, the physical food was at the end of the day because Jesus spent all day ministering to the need that they really had. The need that they really had is they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he spent all day teaching. I don't care what social ministry you get involved with. You've got to connect some part of it to ministering to the real need of people. You need people to have an experience with the person of Jesus who breaks the bread and distributes the fish. Don't get people attracted to you based on handouts. Don't get people attracted to you based on your ability to sing or to dance. That is weak. That will fade. People must be attracted to you because of the Christ in you. That is the hope of glory. People must be attracted to you because when you represent, you represent Christ. I had to share at a particular ministry and the pastor sent a note to me and asked me, what is my brand? I said, what? No, pastor, I need to know what is your brand. Send me something that represents your brand. I say, brand? I wear Nike, Adidas, Puma. I wear wherever I feel. And had I known you all would have been so casual this morning, trust me, I'd have been here in a Puma, a jeans, and a T-shirt too. But I didn't know the environment I was coming into, so hence, you know, uh, a little sharp. But hear this. You represent the person of Jesus, not no brand. Don't get tired of, well, I am this and I am that and I ain't nothing but for the cause of Jesus Christ. I am nothing all by myself, but Christ in me, the hope of glory. Trust me. So after they did all what they had to do and, and all the tired and the whatever, whatever, each disciple had a basket to go home with. Let me tell you something. God is indebted to no man. If you sow into the business of 
church ministering to community, God is going to take care of you. God always have baskets waiting for you. Are you hearing me, church? It's not a bad investment. Especially when you look around, if you see some people are oh, really financially. Oh, really, me just. Give me a time check the quick pastor. One minute, two minutes, one minute. You're good? I'm oh, good. Bless you, sir. Love you. Hear me. Hear me. This thing about sowing up, you will hear it in the kingdom. Oh, you must plant your seed and, and, and plant your seed in where, where people have something. You're sowing up. That is from the pit of hell. Let this pastor tell you that. I will give you scripture to back it. Okay? If you only sowing up and talking foolishness about the poor we will always have with us. The Bible says a gift to the poor is a loan to the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Wait, wait. So if he says the poor is always with us, where is the best place to give something? Wait, you want to invest your money in TD? BMO? CIBC? Let me tell you something about God. God kingdom never suffer a recession. God kingdom don't change its interest rate because he charges you no interest. God pays dividends on your investment. <laughs> I want you following me. And he didn't say a loan to the poor. Stop lending people money who you know can't pay you. Don't lend what you're not prepared to lose. My mother tell me that since I'm going to school. When people are struggling, give them. Don't lend them because when they can't pay you, now they shame. They're hiding from you and all kind of thing. And now you're going and telling other people, you know, she owe me and she crossing the street. You receive your reward already. Give people money and don't let your left hand know what your right hand do. And God looking out for you. You, want like, you understand what I'm saying? Your money going to be like the pitch lake. Always have. They left with sufficient to take care of their needs and of their family. Because God called the disciples away from their families. And as I close, consider this. They were all family men, eh? Some of us seem not to forget that. Some people are misguided and think that Peter is the first pope since the Catholic Church. Well, Peter break all the pope rules because Peter had a wife. And the church actually started in his mother-in-law house. If you're a bad husband, your mother-in-law ain't how you're preaching and she house starting no church, you know. You, you understand what I'm saying? I, 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 33 years, two months and 10 days. My mother-in-law consider me the best human being of the male species alive because of the way I have taken care of her daughter. I'm not exaggerating. She called me son, not son-in-law. It has outlaw son-in-law. It has a hot pepper called mother-in-law. It's a bad pepper. My mother called me son, my mother-in-law, 94 years old. You know why? When we planted Truth Center, we planted it at 13 Sandy Shore Drive in Brampton. You know where? By her sister house. If I was a bad husband, you think I could go into sister house and start church? I'm teaching all this over here, you know. You want to minister to community, get your business right at home, eh? Let the community look at you and see something to pattern. See something to desire. See something that says you are attractive. Don't come in here and put on all your religious face and when you go home, you're beast face. You, know? you walk in the house, you look like rain set up always ready to fall on your forehead. Smile a while and give your face a rest. That is community business. Your community is going to be attractive to you when you look the part. 
beautiful he is, we sing. Not so? Our oh, God is good. You all were singing along this morning. Eh? God has been faithful. God has been so, so good. Well, let me see it now. <laughs> Whenever I see you, his goodness is it's true. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the community know that. Because it is God's goodness that leads to repentance. And God blesses us that we would be a blessing. That is community business. And the church is not this building. The church is where all of you just came from. And where all of you are going back to. Because you church. Hello. You church. So whichever part of the community you dwell, you represent church there. So be a good representation and people will follow you here. Pastor, them amen and them kind of weak this morning, but God is good. His word bears fruit. His word caused that whole community to sit around hungry, tired and exhausted because what he offered was life. People will not grumble about your service if when they come in here, they get life. Are you following me? When you go out there, you live as you should. You testify by the way you live to others that this God is really good. And trust me, you will be successful in all your community outreach. And your community outreach don't mean you have to bring the whole community in the church. In. You just have to carry Jesus to them. That's why the scriptures say go. <laughs> go. Carry Jesus to them and trust him to do the rest. This church will lack nothing in the name of Jesus. As you invest, you shall see the fruit of your labor in the name of Jesus. None of you will suffer from lack or want in the name of Jesus. You are blessed beyond a curse in the name of Jesus. What you put your hands to shall prosper for you are above and not beneath. And you must claim your heritage as children of the living God. Bow your heads with me. Praise the name of the Lord God. Father, we thank you today for who you are. We thank you for the opportunity we have to be here as a family. I pray, God, that by your spirit, that which you have spoken to us would have been received as you intended. And the desired result will manifest itself in the name Jesus. I speak blessing upon your people from the pastor, his wife, his leadership team to every member, including the baby we saw this morning in the Sunday School Junior Church downstairs. From the eldest to the youngest, both male and female, let your blessing rest and abide upon every soul connected to this house and every family by extension. And by that, we push back the gates of hell in our communities and we claim souls for your kingdom's advancement. And we declare it so even now in the name Jesus. Serve notice on you, devil, you're defeated. You're simple, you're defeated. Take your company and flee in the name Jesus. We spoil principality and power, spiritual wickedness set up against us in high places. We cast down even imaginations that are contrary to the will and purpose of God. And we speak liberty in our community. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we push back the gates of hell in the name Jesus. And if you agree with me, church, could we say amen? I ain't hear you. Amen. One more time. Amen. All right. When we shout in amen, trust me, my mouth is bigger than my wife's own, so I ain't going to blow your hair. But we just make noise. Amen? amen? The privilege was mine. Love you all. And Bishop.
Blessings, Pastor. Before you go, I'm just going to invite you to come back with us. Pastor, I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to invite your lovely wife as well to join you as well. North Park, did you receive the word? I want to thank you. Thank you for your ministry. I want to thank you for coming and being obedient to the Spirit and uh, ministering to us as the Spirit lays the word upon your heart. Uh, to show our appreciation to you, sir. Uh, it's two fish. Five. <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> but it's our way of saying thank you. And we pray that God will continue to bless you and to be, you be fruitful in your ministry. God bless you, sir. I'm going to invite Sister Dawn to come, and she will be doing a presentation. Michelle, Sister Michelle. On behalf of the North Park Worship Center, we'd like to present this little token of appreciation, thanking you for standing with your husband, ministering with your husband, and God bless you. Um, I got a little confused about that. Um, how many years and? 's North Park appreciate the man of God and his wife for the ministry that they perform, they, they do for us today at this time we're going to be getting into our community outreach segments I'm going to invite sister Jackie to come
this time, let's do our begin. Good morning, North Park. My name is Joan Eubanks, and today I'll be sharing a little bit about Rose Community Outreach Ministry with you. Rose Ministry has been serving North Park and the community for the past 10 years. The ministry came about when the Lord laid on my heart a burden to mentor and disciple young moms, ages 15 through 25, who were experiencing social, financial, and emotional challenges, and therefore needed support. And so in response to these needs, we created a team of volunteers from various fields of expertise, and that's how we started off with the ministry. We started the ministry in our local church, and then we went out into the community. What does Rose signify? R is for respect, O is for outreach, S is for support, and E is for empower. Here at Rose Ministry, we strongly believe that mothers should be respected regardless of their age. We believe that young mothers should not be left behind based on their age, but should be met at their point of need. At Rose Community Outreach, young mothers will receive the necessary support in order to make positive choices that will impact their families. Every young mother has potential. And let me say this again. Every young mother has potential and therefore will be given guidance to improve her life and in turn strengthen her family. What is our vision here at Rose Ministry? We believe that God has created everyone to fulfill a purpose. And therefore, Rose has designed a program to empower young mothers to take personal control of their lives and their future in order to achieve their goals and dreams. What is our mission? Our mission is to provide a safe and loving environment where these young mothers feel like they're loved and respected. They should also be able to feel safe to express themselves. And therefore, we, we try our very best to provide them with the tools that they need to be empowered and to remind them that they are loved. Here at Rose Ministry, we embrace diversity. We support any young mother to reach their full potential, be it emotional, social, spiritual, or intellectual. Now, how do you get involved, North Park? Rose Ministry is it's solely operated by volunteers and donations. But before I go any further, let me take some time out to say thank you to North, North Park and friends who have been supporting us over the years. You've gone above and beyond. You've given to every call that we've made, and therefore our ministry has been progressing. And for this, we say thank you so much for all that you do and continue to do. To the leadership here at North Park, thank you for buying into our vision. We pray that God will bless you all and that you will continue to give. For, you, for more information on how you can become a part of this awesome team, kindly see one of us at the end of the service in the foyer and we'll give you more information. Once again, thank you so much and God bless you. Good morning, church family. Hope you're doing well. My name is Lois Sullivan and I am the newest member of the community outreach team heading up the Benevolence Initiative. Benevolence is about meeting the needs within our church family. This was initially referred to as the Compassions Ministry. We've rebranded it to reflect the love and commitment that we have to our church family. Later today, I will be doing an overview presentation on why benevolence and how we as a community, church community can support members within our church. As you know, there are some challenging times that we are all faced with and together, I think we can meet these challenges. I'm excited to be on the team. I'm excited to put together a group of volunteers. So as you know, I will be reaching out um, and seeking your support, both um, as 
from a financial perspective as well as joining our team because there are lots of exciting things coming. Looking forward to presenting to you later today um, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you and have a great day. Hello everyone, um, my name is Brother Percy. I'm a part of the outreach committee here at the Nag Park Worship Center as my t-shirt represents. Um, I volunteer with um, the Love Brampton over the years and uh, as we join partner with um, the New Haven community. Um, I'm looking forward to continue where God leads me in terms of volunteering with the outreach community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chanel Dan and I'm the team lead for the coldest night of the year for North Park Worship Center, a part of the community outreach ministry. Coldest Night of the Year started back in 2011 and is a Canada-wide annual event where tens of thousands of people walk to raise money and awareness for those in our community who are hurt, hungry, and homeless. North Park has been doing the Coldest Night event for the last 10 years and we will continue to do so, starting up our team in December for the Coldest Night Walk on February 25th 2023. This event is near and dear to my heart, as it is of many, many other people, an initiative that I truly believe in because we all need help at some point in our lives. So join us for the coldest night of the year and all the other great initiatives that the Community Outreach Ministry has. Be a part and help those in need. Good morning, North Park Worship Center. My name is Joanna Eubanks, and I'm here to give you an overview and a brief update regarding Concrete Rose Ministry. Now, many of you are wondering, what does the name Concrete Rose stand for? We came up with this name because of the idea that if you think of a concrete, it's something that is often considered to be dirty, something that's considered to be below people and often trampled on, never really regarded as anything special. And the idea that something beautiful can emerge from something like concrete was really what came to mind when we thought about starting this ministry to help local children back in Jamaica. Concrete Rose is the brainchild of our very own sister Joan Eubanks, who had a vision and also something that was placed on her heart to help the local children in Rocky Point, Clarendon, Jamaica, which is also her hometown. The charitable organization and ministry was created as a direct response for the need to not only give supplies that were in high demand but too expensive for the locals to afford but also the sense of hopelessness that existed in this community with the vision and the assistance of family friends strangers and of course the wonderful members at north park worship center in 2012 the mission began and 10 years later the mission continues since that time concrete rose has successfully kept its back to school program which was pre-covid running annually in Rocky Point, Clarendon, Jamaica. At this give back program, it's a three to four day program where we would travel to the community and have hundreds of children attend, where we would lead them through worship in the interest of obviously first and foremost, spreading the word of Christ and hoping to save souls. But for these children between the ages of three, 17 and sometimes older, we would give them an opportunity to learn about etiquette, we would provide them with social skills that they would need to go out into the workforce and also to assist them with educational information, personal support um, kits. And also we were very focused on mental health and preserving their general wellness. Most importantly, we are happy to say that many children have benefited from our ministry by way of scholarships that have led to career paths and also by way of assisting young children with you know, the opportunity to go to school with all the things that they need, something that would, wasn't provided prior to the ministry assisting in this district. We look forward to the continued summer program now that COVID restrictions have been lifted, and this support would not have been possible without you, North Park Worship Center. You have shown up in leaps and bounds and droves and given of your time, you steadfast given donations, prayers, and also the gift of your presence for those of you that have attended with us on our uh, summer trips for the Give Back program. And of course, we want to say to everyone that's assisted in any fashion, 
thank you, thank you, and thank you. If you would like to join Concrete Rose Ministry, or you would like to assist us with donations or building awareness of this ministry, you're more than welcome to please contact Sister Joan Eubanks or any members of the team. Now, before I go, I would be remiss if I did not mention our COO of Concrete Rose, our Chief Operating Officer, which is Brother Yuquin Eubanks. We'd like to say a special thank you because for many of you that know, shipping products to Jamaica and getting them cleared, the logistics of renting equipment and getting the program set up can be quite daunting. And he has done that effortlessly and without complaints. And so we would like to just make a special recognition of Brother Yuquin Eubanks. That's it from Concrete Rose Ministries. We thank you so much for your support and look forward to your continued support. God bless you, North Park. daunting it seems to be here um, and I'm a little nervous this morning I don't know why but I wanted to um, just introduce to you uh, the benevolence um, initiative that is taking place under the community outreach um, banner benevolence uh, to us means the quality of being well-meaning, kind-hearted, and having kindness. From a, as you know, this was the Compassions Ministry in the past, and while we are renaming it, we wanted to share with you that compassion is really about the concern for the suffering of others. When you think about injustice in the world, what do you think is your responsibility? So we would say to ourselves, can you be the change you wanna see in the world, in the community, and in your church? The Bible says in Philippians 2, 3 and 4, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. I wanna to talk to you about adversity and suffering and the fact that it is happening in our church. And our team looks to talk about initiative to address these. So suffering comes in many forms and there are just a few here. Bereaved, illness, financial due to lack of employment or underemployment, poverty, which has to do with scarcity, food insecurity, lack of housing, general lack, and the need for medical services where you are not able to access. Bereavement is the experience of a loss of someone important and is characterized by grief. And it is the process and the range of emotions that we go through when we are generally, or when we're gradually adjusting to a loss. Everyone knows that bereavement is about death it's about the end of a relationship, loss of a job, moving away or to a new location, or a decline in physical, mental health of someone we care about. With that in mind, the way that our team would see it is that we would ask for volunteers to support our initiatives through act of kindness. 
by listening, having an expression of care with people that we know in the church that are having these experiences, communicating that they're not alone, providing practical help, checking in and offering words of encouragement that will touch people's hearts. The way that we would do that is by handing out gift cards, handing out birthday cards, or anything that we can do to help anyone that is being bereaved. The second uh, item with respect to being benevolent has to do with meeting people who are ill. Illness, obviously, is about having a disease or experiencing a period of illness that affects your body or your mind. Also, it affects families, families in church, families, family members who are not ill but are also um, needing support because they're struggling with their own helplessness. And from an initiative's perspective, our team would look at figuring out ways that we can serve those that are needing our help by taking them to appointment. We would seek volunteers that would help to support minor home repairs. If you have those skills, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for people who can bake cookies, brownies, treats, cook a meal, visit, write a note, offer up cards, and offer words of encouragement during holidays and making sure that that person feels cared for. The third type of hardship that we often think about when we think about community support has to do with financial hardship. There is a lack in people's lives financially due to unemployment or underemployment. We've talked about the fact that things are hard. The uh, pastor this morning mentioned that people are suffering, that people are looking for support, and that it actually begins within the house of the Lord. But what we want to highlight is the practical aspect of why people are having a hard time, and that is inflation. Everything has gone up, as you know. Everything is prohibitive when you go to the grocery store. Medical expenses are costly. People experience financial hardship because of marital breakdown or family breakdown. There's a general scarcity and there's indebtedness. Results of scarcity is insecurity, instability in homes or scarcity at home, general lack, and as I mentioned, medical expenses. But when we think about food insecurity, I want to mention that without reliable access to affordable and nutritious food, it can impact every aspect of your life. In the, PG, in, the re, in the region of Peel, one in 10 households have food insecurity. What does that mean in church? That one in 10 people here are having food insecurity. It's similar across Ontario, and it generally affects low income households um, and those who rely on government benefits. The way that we see our ability to solution and serve that is we would look for volunteers that will support our initiative through fundraising activities. We do have a plan for having a Black Business Expo where we would look at um, sharing uh, profits. And we have an immediate initiative that will be starting next week where one of our dear members of our church, Sister Cora, I'll ask you to give away, will be supporting a tea party where she will be serving her twisted chai. Mm -hmm. 
what this means is that you buy a cup of tea, you give us the, the benefits, we're able to support the needs in the church. Those financial supports will result in gift cards to feed members in our church. We would distribute foods through food drives when it's appropriate through Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we would also raise awareness about where you can get your financial and your physical food needs within the community. We will talk to you about where that would occur. We will talk to you about where affordable housing is available. We will talk to you about what instability is all about in terms of when you are experiencing that, where you can get that um, help. So we know that folks are having lack of affordable housing. We know that folks are having instability due to the financial losses. Our community want to be, a, our, pardon me, our, our group want to be able to meet with you. We want to be able to share with you what so, uh, services are available in the community. And one of the things that I want to stress about our team is that we will be discreet, we will be confidential, and we will talk to you about those resources. I'm nearly done. Um, one of the other important things that folks may not talk about our general lack and the impact to our children. We would ask as a initiative, and we will launch that shortly, has to do with sponsoring a child in the church. We would identify children who are having a lack and we would ask you to sponsor that child. Passion and compassion for people. The Bible says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they, if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has no one to lift him up. Thank you. Good morning again, everyone. Excuse my wonderful radio rasp. Uh, this morning, I'm here representing Rose Ministry. Um, my co-facilitator could not be here with me, but you've already seen her this morning, and that's the lovely Joanna. Um, this morning, I am here to talk about an initiative that Rose Community Outreach is delighted and enthusiastic about presenting. Alongside North Park Rose, we'll be reaching out to our surrounding community to facilitate a six-week life skills seminar. A seminar that is designed to uplift, empower, encourage, and come alongside young mothers as they strive to develop goals, to fulfill dreams, and to mother their children to the best of their ability. What, what better way than to have the church be able to come alongside these young mothers? The program is designed for young mothers ages 15 through 25. Young mom moms from all over are welcome to register. We wanna extend uh, this opportunity out to as many as we can. We ask you to share the program and registration information with your friends, your family, your neighbors, anyone who you think would benefit from this initiative. Registration information will be posted on the Rose Community Outreach section of our church website, northparkwc.org. Please also stay tuned for flyers, which can be distributed throughout the community, and also continue to listen out for your weekly announcements as we give you further information. Sessions will be held via Zoom. However, the excitement for us is 
Our first session's going to be in person because what better way to build connection than to be able to see and interact personally with the people who are going to be disseminating the information to you. No connection, no growth. Connection is so important. So we're gonna be meeting with these young moms on our first session, and then the last session, party! <laughs> because you have graduated successfully, you've completed the life skills program, and we want to celebrate that success with you. Again, connection. So we're looking forward to doing that in our first and our last session, the other ones being online. This all commences on October the 29th, and sessions will be on Saturdays from 12 till 2. For more information, you're free to see any of the Rose Community um, members uh, in the foyer after service. And as a last little note that I want to drop, we see my face a lot, a lot. I decided that I was going to assist Rose during COVID by doing tech. All I was supposed to do was log on and help with the Zoom. And now look where I reach. <laughs> so I also say that to say, volunteers, don't be shy at getting tired. Don't be shy. <laughs> Don't be shy, we definitely want to have more people involved because more voices also means more perspective. Thank you so much, North Park. I'm praising on the battlefield. I'm singing through the pain. My God, you have delivered me, and I know you will again. Why would I worry? What should I fear? I know you're for me, forever with me. You don't stop, won't stop fighting for me. No doubt I'll see that victory. You don't stop, won't stop.
Park, who have contributed over the years and continue to do so. We look forward to your continued support. Now we have um, just a few minutes before we wrap up and then we can exit uh, to downstairs where we'll get some refreshment and have a taste of uh, fish chai tea, which will be going on sale. It's a part of our fundraising <laughs> activity. Now, before I close up and, and wrap this segment up, I'd like to give some shout outs to some individuals. And this is because I directly had conversations with them and that's why I'm gonna be doing this. I wanna shout out, give a shout out to Marcia because Marcia at a short notice uh, shared some of her backpacks with us this year to put towards helping uh, those who need that support. I wanna give a shout out to Simone, she's not here, but Simone donated a backpack which I thought that, you know what, if I was going back to school, that's the backpack that I would want. So I was a little bit kinda jealous about <laughs> the fact that she's giving that away to someone else and it wasn't me. So when the individual came up, uh, I think it was a teenage girl, she came up and I had the conversation with her and I said, hey, if I was going back to school, there's a particular uh, backpack that I would pick. And she's like, which one, this one? And she picked that one. So I just wanna give a shout out to uh, mm. Simone for that. I also wanna give a shout out to Maxine, one of our new uh, members here. Uh, Maxine, the first day I, 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 I dropped off the um, request to her, the following week, Maxine took her um, backpack here with special instructions, and she's not here today, but just wanna let her know that we did follow through on those instructions. The other piece is I just wanna give a shout out to all my seniors who have been contributing over the years to the uh, food drive, and so wanna give a shout out to Milton Dixon. He's consistently, <laughs> and he's standing there, thank you. So he's consistently uh, contributed to the food drive. Every time we say food drive, I get um, a call that Milton is showing up and he's dropping off food. So thank you very much. Also wanted to give a shout out to Cydia, Lorraine, and Suzette at short notice. You know what you did. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but thank you so very much for that. Now, there's a special person that I've observed over the years and I want to call that individual up. That person, um, I, I remembered uh, a couple years ago, she uh, joined in the church, would just come in, walk out, come in, walk out, and that's what she would do every, um, every Sunday. And she would say hi, and then had a conversation with her one day, and you know, she said to me, Jack, is there any help that you need to, you know, with anything? And I said, yeah. And so I had her um, join in the um, working with the seniors. And then I said, yeah, I need you um, on community outreach team. And so now she's become my sidekick. And I'll call right now Marion Sterling to come up. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the individuals that we kind of need at North Park. So we see the growth. We need these individuals to step up. So there's a place for everyone. She's been very consistent over the years. I get phone calls all the time. If there's something, community outreach coming up, she's calling me, Jackie, what do you need? And I'm like, you know what? So I'm getting a call in the morning, I'm getting a call in the afternoon, I'm getting a mm -hmm. call on the day of, and then she's showing up. So Marion, thank you for all that you do. All right. I know you're pretty shy, but we need some more Marians in the house. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, so having said that, thank you again, North Park, for all that you do in the community. Some of you might not step up like uh, Marianne because you might not have the time, and we do appreciate that, but you do give up your finances, you do give up your talent, and we do thank you. Uh, together we're making a difference in our community and abroad. Thank you so much for all that you do. As we close, could we stand?
And the whole purpose of this is to help us to understand the call of God upon our lives as a church, as individuals. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not just about coming to church and having a wonderful time and then going home. But it's about understanding that we are called to a greater purpose. And that greater p- purpose is the purpose of God. God is in the ministry of meeting people. That's what we are called to do. Serving people. That's what we are called to do. And so North Park continue, continue to, um, to minister and to give into and support uh, the initiatives that were mentioned. Uh, continue to uh, give financially. We just continue to realize that this is what we're about. It's about reaching our community, uh, both with the gospel, uh, but also to meet the needs of the people around us. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. And I said, you can go downstairs for a time of refreshment and fellowship.